Hey everybody, welcome to my video about iOS 13. In this video, I'm going to go over what I think are all of the best new features coming in iOS 13 and give you some of my observations so far while I've been testing it. This video is based on iOS 13, Public Beta 3, and 4. So if any substantial changes occur in the future, I'll be sure to make a follow-up video. The first feature most people are really excited about is Dark Mode. It does look pretty cool. You can turn on Dark Mode all the time or have it only come on at night. To adjust or check out the Dark Mode settings, tap the Settings app and scroll down to Display and Brightness. Here you can adjust Dark Mode manually or make it automatically change at sunset or switch from light to dark mode with a custom schedule. There's even new wallpapers that are optimized for dark mode that automatically change as you switch between light and dark mode. It's pretty cool, and is the number one feature I think most people will be checking out in iOS 13. One really cool new system change is the volume display. Gone are the days when it's in the middle of the screen. Now it's this cool volume bar that shows up beside the volume keys. I think it's really cool the way it starts out thick so you can see it and then turns thin so it doesn't take up too much screen space. This is a welcome change in iOS 13, I think. Next are the all new features coming in the Photos app. First is the all new Photos tab. The Photos tab lets you browse your photo library with different levels of curation, so it's easy to find, relive, and even share your photos and videos. You can view everything in all photos, focus on your unique photos and days, relive your significant moments and months, or rediscover your highlights and years. The next big new feature in Photos is the ability to apply almost every effect that you can apply to a still picture to videos. Nearly everything you can do with a photo you can now do with a video. Adjustments, filters, and crop support video editing so you can rotate, increase exposure, or even apply filters to your videos. Video editing supports all video formats captured on iPhone, including video in 4K at 60 frames per second and slow-mo in 1080p at 240 frames per second. There's some great new features for those with AirPods in iOS 13 as well. Now you can have Siri announce messages on your AirPods when you first put them on, and even pair or use more than one set of AirPods to your iPhone simultaneously. I'll be going into more detail in my next video, AirPods with iOS 13, so make sure you subscribe to check that out in the near future iOS 13 also offers new improved Memoji customization. Makeup lets you customize blush and eyeshadow and includes editing tools to make it easy to get just the right look. Customize your teeth with braces and add piercings to your nose, eyebrows, eyelids, and around your mouth. There are also 30 new hairstyles, over 15 new pieces of headwear, and even more earrings and glasses for you to choose from. There's even some new welcome improvements for dealing with files in iOS 13. First is a new Downloads folder that gives you a central place to access your web downloads and attachments from both Safari and Mail. iOS 13 even lets you select files to zip them for easy sharing via email. And when you receive them, just tap a file to expand it into a folder and access the files. It even natively lets you access files on a USB drive, SD card, or hard drive. In iOS 13, Find My iPhone and Find My Friends were merged and replaced with a new Find My app. They are now a single easy to use app that helps you locate the people and devices that are important to you. And a really big win a lot of people have been asking for has been delivered in iOS 13, a built-in swiped keyboard. It's called Quick Path Typing. Simply swipe from one letter to the next without lifting your finger to enter a word. On-device machine learning recognizes the path you draw and converts it for you, making one-handed typing a breeze. I've heard so many people ask for this feature. I will admit, I've been trying to use this, and it personally isn't up my alley, but I think it's one of those things where once you're used to it, it can be pretty handy. There's an all-new Reminders app in iOS 13 as well. Now it's supposed to be even easier to create and organize reminders. The quick toolbar lets you add dates, times, locations, flags, photos, and scan documents. And Siri suggests reminders you might want to add, like creating a reminder while you make plans and messages. The Reminders app has an all-new Smart Lists feature. Smart lists are supposed to be even more helpful now, automatically organizing your reminders and grouping them by flagged, scheduled, and today group sorting. I must admit, I never use the Reminders app, so I really can't attest to it being improved. I really do enjoy using list apps. I specifically use Wonderlist for all of my lists currently. It's not perfect, but seems to mostly meet my needs. I mostly set reminders on my calendar, so I've never been sure what the deal is with the Reminders app. I found making lists in it not as useful as Wonderlist, as it doesn't strike out the items on the list when you check them off. So it's not something that I can really speak to. If any of you use the Reminders app, please share your thoughts on the iOS 13 update for Reminders in the comments below. Maybe those of us that don't use it just aren't using it correctly, or there's something that we're missing.
One really cool new feature in iOS 13 is the ability to select both Wi-Fi networks and Bluetooth devices right from Control Center. I think this is quite a welcome improvement. To select a Wi-Fi network or Bluetooth device from Control Center, first go to Control Center by swiping down from the upper right hand corner as normal, then 3D touch the networking square in the top left to expand that section. Then 3D touch either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth to bring up the list of networks or devices to connect to. I don't think this method is necessarily faster than 3D touching the settings app and going in from there, but it's an alternate way to get there that may be a bit more convenient at times. Another welcome update to iOS 13 is a faster Face ID unlock time. iOS 13 is supposed to be even faster than iOS 12 when unlocking your iPhone with Face ID. Apple says Face ID is supposed to be up to 30% faster when unlocking your iPhone. I don't have actual numbers myself, but it certainly does feel faster. It's quite a welcome change. And speaking of speed, Apple says apps are supposed to launch up to twice as fast as well. Again, I don't have stats, but so far in my use of the public beta, it's performed quite fast. One of the smaller updates to iOS 13 is the Mail app. iOS 13 adds text formatting tools in Mail. Now you can write professional looking email on the go with formatting options that include font style, size, color, alignment, indenting and outdenting text, and numbered and bulleted lists iOS 13 also has a new and improved notes app. A new gallery view and more powerful search help you find whatever note you need right when you need it. The new checklist options are supposed to help you get more done and shared folders are supposed to make it easier to collaborate with others on folders and notes. There's also a new gallery view that lets you see your notes as visual thumbnails, making it easier than ever to quickly find the note you're looking for. It's supposed to be especially great for notes with images, sketches, or Apple Pencil handwriting. And to expand on the new checklist options, you can now quickly reorder checklist items using drag and drop, swipe to indent items, and move checked items to the bottom. If you've completed the checklist and want to use it again, you can tap to uncheck all the items and start over. I personally think this is a far better way to make lists than using the Reminders app. I think this could even possibly replace my use of Wonderlist. I'm still trying it out to see if this will completely meet my list needs, but it's pretty good. I like how it sorts the list and moves the checked items to the bottom. The health app in iOS 13 has even been updated as well. Apple claims it's easier than ever to access the information that matters most to you. And for the ladies, there's now cycle tracking to help you gain insight into your menstrual cycle and provide a clearer picture of your overall health. I can imagine that could be very insightful and helpful. Also in iOS 13, there's been a few Siri enhancements. Most notably is the improved Siri voice that's supposed to sound more natural than ever, particularly while speaking longer phrases with a voice that's generated entirely by software. An entropy of a cooled ideal gas reached their minimum value, taken as zero. Absolute zero is the lowest limit of the thermodynamic temperature scale, a state at which the enthalpy and entropy of a cooled ideal gas reach their minimum value, taken as zero. In iOS 13, there's also an updated Safari Start Page feature where Siri suggests favorites and frequently visited websites so you can quickly get to where you want to go. I feel your mileage on this may vary, but I can see it being helpful for some. There's also enhanced font management and extra text editing and navigation features built into iOS 13. For enhanced text editing and navigation, you can move the cursor and select text even easier, and quickly scroll through long documents, websites, and emails by holding down the scroll bar and dragging it to the bottom or top of the screen. And now with font management, you can create beautiful documents that reflect the style and character of your project with custom fonts you can install from the App Store. iOS 13 also has an updated share sheet. When you share a photo or document, your iPhone now suggests who you might want to share it with and which app you may want to use, so you can quickly share with just a tap. I use the share sheet a lot. So far, for the way I often use it, I found the update to be less useful. I usually use the share sheet to share pictures or files between my computers with AirDrop, which hasn't really changed much. But when you want to share things with WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, I found it to be more difficult at first. But I figured out that you can edit what appears on the share sheet to make it easier. Scroll over to More with the three dots, then press Edit in the upper right hand corner. This will help you add the apps you like to share to, to the main share sheet screen. I found after I figured that out, it wasn't too bad, but I don't really see any big benefit to the share sheet update myself as of yet. The last major change to iOS 13 I'm going to talk about are the changes to Apple's music app. They've updated the look a bit and added a cool faded look to the bottom of the screen when it displays long playlists. They've also changed the look of the menu that comes up when you 3D press a song and even added some new options to the menu that comes up. But to me the most welcome change is that it now gives you the option to repeat or randomize your up next list, which is really handy for creating playlists on the go. I often create custom playlists when I go to the gym or are going to be out and about for a while. And now having the ability to randomize a list I think is pretty cool. 
After you get through your song list, you can randomize it to give it a new feel. Well everybody, this is my early overview of some of the best features coming in iOS 13, which should be officially released in September or possibly early October 2019. The release usually coincides with the new iPhone announcements in the fall. I didn't go over every little update or change in iOS 13, just the bigger ones and changes I thought were interesting or important. Are there any features or updates you think I should have talked about in more detail? Should I do a second video detailing all the changes too? Please feel free to let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And while you're down there, don't forget to ring that bell and subscribe to the channel for more tech videos, including tech how-tos, every week. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.